Azure Arc is pretty neat, that's for sure, but you shouldn't just take my word for it, or Microsoft's, you should really try it out for yourself. But where to start? Well, the easiest way is actually just to onboard one of your non-Azure servers, install the Connected Machine Agent on it, browse around the Arc section of the Azure portal and see what you find. I'll show you how to do this later on in the video with an AWS VM that I have running, as well as a couple of pointers on production deployments of Azure Arc, so stick around till the end. But that's not actually the main focus of this video, because Microsoft has this really cool service, or it's not really a service, but it's not really a product either, so um, let's just call it a thing. Microsoft has this really cool thing called ArcBox. And what the ArcBox does is that it provides you with a complete demo environment for you to play around with, for example, Azure Arc. It comes in a couple of different flavors depending on your needs, but the one we are going to be focusing on today is the ArcBox for IT pros. In essence, this ArcBox deploys a VM with a couple of supporting resources and within that VM is a couple of nested VMs that will be onboarded to Arc. If you're not familiar with nested VMs then don't worry, all you need to know for now is that by the end of the deployment you will have two Linux VMs, three Windows Server based VMs, one of which will be running SQL Server and this means that you can get to play around with Azure Arc and see what it can do both on Linux VMs and Windows Servers and SQL Server. So let's get this ArcBox deployed shall we? So all the documentation and guides for ArcBox is actually on a website called azurearcjumpstart.io. It's one of those rare occasions where you won't find all you need on learn.microsoft.com. So yeah, from the main page of azurearcjumpstart.io, we will jump over to Jumpstart ArcBox and we will find our Jumpstart ArcBox for IT pros. The other two here, the ArcBox for DevOps and the ArcBox for Data Ops, is also made for learning about Azure Arc, but they are more geared towards the Kubernetes features for the DevOps one, and the Data Ops one is more geared towards the SQL Managed Instance feature of Azure Arc. You can, of course, also go for the ArcBox full, and you get all these three combined into one deployment. Now, don't get too scared scrolling up and down here thinking this is way too complex, because it's really not. There's just a whole lot of stuff here about multiple ways of deploying the ArcBox. You have guides for the ARM template via Azure CLI. You have a bicep guide. You have a Terraform guide. And of course, the portal guide. So let's just scroll on down to the prerequisites and see what you actually need to get this ArcBox deployed. So you need Azure CLI, at least version 2.40, and you need to have an Azure subscription where you have owner rights, or at least a resource group where you have owner rights. And you need to be able to create service principles in Azure AD. I believe that calls for at least the application administrator role. And the subscription where you are deploying needs to have quarters for at least one D16S version 4 VM in one of the supported regions for Arcbox. Yes, you heard me. D16, 16 cores and 64 gigs of RAM. Now, in my setup, I know that I have the required version and I know that I have the required quotas. So I'll just scroll on down here to the registration of Azure resource providers because you need these four Azure resource providers in order to use Azure Arc. So I'll just copy them and head on over to Azure CLI, paste them in one by one and run them. And in my tenant, these are already registered, but there's no harm in doing it yet another time. With that done, it's time to create the service principle for my Arc box. Now, the guide has a pretty decent example here, but there's one key thing missing that I really want to do because running it like it says here, it will provide access to the entire subscription for the service principle. And I want to narrow it down to an existing resource group. So what I need first to do is to go over to the Azure portal. And this is my resource group right here. And I'll head on down to properties and I'll copy the resource ID for my resource group. So copy that and then go back to Azure CLI. And here we'll go AZ AD SP create dash four dash R back dash N and this will be the name for my service principle. So I'll call it arc box demo dash dash role and this would be owner dash dash scope and this is where I'll paste in my resource ID. 
So I'll run that. And the output there is something that I will need later on. So I'll just leave that there for now. Next, I will need to generate an SSH key pair. This is just to make the login to Linux VMs just a tad more secure than using mere usernames and passwords. And again, the guide here has a pretty decent example. So I'll just use that. So I'll copy this here and head on back to my terminal and paste it in like that. Run it. And default location is fine. Um, use a passphrase, but I'll jump over it that for now. And now we actually get to deploy stuff. So I'll go back to the guide and I'll go with the option one here for simplicity's sake. So I'll just click this lovely deploy to Azure button. And of course, select the subscription and the resource group. Scroll on down. Region West Europe is fine. Now, the public key here is the one I did create. So let's go back to my terminal. And you see your public key has been saved in blah, blah, blah. So I'll copy that and then open that up in Notepad. So this is my public key. So I'll just copy it all over and paste it in here. And the SPN client ID is also back in my terminal. So I'll, I'll go back here and find the app ID. Copy that. Paste that in there. And the client secret is what's referred to as password here. So I'll copy that as well. Paste it in. Tenant ID. Copy that as well. Paste that in. Now Windows admin username is whatever you like, but it follows the same guidelines as the normal deployment of Azure VMs, so you need to oblige by those password rules. So I'll go with my default set here. As for the log analytics workspace name, it can be whatever you want. So I'll just go with Arc Law. And here you select which flavor of the Arc box you want. Again, DevOps one is geared towards Kubernetes features. DataOps is geared towards SQL managed instance features, while the IT Pro one is mainly focused around VMs. And here you can specify if you want your ArcBox deployment to include Azure Bastion. If you're not familiar with Azure Bastion, click the link. I have a video on it. Uh, I'll leave it at false for now and just click review and create. And of course, create. And this deployment will take a little while. This deployment is going to take a while, so put your feet on the table, grab a cup of coffee and wait. But don't leave because we have some post deployment tasks that we need to perform in order to have our ArcBox completely set up and working. Now that the deployment is done, we need to kick off those post deployment automations. So I'll go to resource group and here we need to connect to the VM that contains all the nested VMs. Well, actually it doesn't yet, but it will soon. So I'll click the ArcBox client and hit connect rdp now following best practices this vm is of course not publicly available at all times on rdp so if you opted to use bastion in your deployment then you can use bastion to connect to this vm if you have defender for servers plan 2 on your subscription you can use just in time access i have neither so let's go for adding an nsd rule to allow rdp access so i'll click add an inbound network security group with port number 3389 so add inbound port rule and destination port would be 3389 and add now this is by no means a perfect nc rule you should probably never have this kind of rules but you know for the sake of simplicity so let's just keep it at that now once that's completed go back to connect and click download rdp file open up that rdp file click connect then more choices Use a different account and input the username and password that I'd specified during the deployment. And hit OK. And yes, of course, to the certificate. Now, once we are logging in, we should see a couple of PowerShell windows pop up. And actually, those are the post deployment tasks that we need. So we will leave these running. It will usually take somewhere near half an hour and after that the post deployment should be done the final step of the post deployment tasks is actually to change the wallpaper so if you come back a while later and see that you have got this brand new jumpstart arc box wallpaper well then that usually means that everything has gone okay so now that we have the post deployment done 
the arc box should be ready to play. So let's minimize this and go back to our Azure portal and we'll go into the arc section and see if we have some resources. So let's check out, for example, servers. And here you can see that we have a couple of resources. And if we click on one of these servers, we can use, for example, the machine configuration, auto manage, update management, inventorying, change tracking, all of these arc features. Perhaps my favorite is the Windows Admin Center, which basically allows you to do every kind of management you want to do with your service right here in the Azure portal, even as far as remoting into the server without exposing it to public internet. So that's kind of nice. Now, this isn't supposed to be a in-depth tutorial of what Arc can do, but as you can see, now we have our Arc box set up and we can check out what Azure Arc has to offer. So that's the easy way of getting a nice little demo environment up for you to toy around with. And the beauty of it all is that once you've done, you can just delete the resource group and every trace of the Arc box is gone, except for the service principle, of course, but you should probably clean up that as well. Now for the AWS part of the video, or just simply how to onboard any server to Azure Arc. So I have this AWS Linux VM here that I want to onboard to Azure Arc. So I'll go to the Arc section of the Azure portal to servers. I'll click add. And in this case, I just want to add a single server. So I'll click on generate script over here. It lists some prerequisites here, but it's basically that you need local admin root privileges and that you need an internet connection. So I'll click next and I'll select the subscription and the resource group where I want my Linux server to be placed. Uh, the region here is basically just where metadata will be stored, but nonetheless, I will be using West Europe here as well. Operating system in my case is Linux and I'll hit next. I'll skip the tags for now and hit next. And now I have a nice little script. So I'll just copy that and go back to my Linux VM, paste it in, run it. And somewhere along the lines here, I will be prompted to log in with my uh, Azure AD account. So, uh, and here we are. So I'll just copy the URL and go there, go back to my terminal and copy the code. Paste that in there, sign in with my account and continue. And now I'm signed in, go back and the installation should continue. After just a bit more waiting now, the VM should be visible in the Azure portal. Now that the script is done, we could go back to the Azure portal. We'll close this wizard right here, go back to Azure Arc servers, hit refresh and ah, here we are, our Amazon Linux VM. And you can see that it also brings over some information from the AWS side, for example, cloud provider, manufacturer, model, and so on, which is kind of nice. And now that you know how to onboard servers to Azure Arc and how to deploy your own demo environment, it's time to start planning your production deployment because you should still do a fair bit of planning before you start to onboarding all of your non-Azure stuff into Azure Arc. You can, of course, place 5,000 ARC resources within a single resource group, but please don't. Instead, you should plan out your Azure ARC deployment so that it fits in with the rest of your Azure environment. Because I assume that you do have a nice little hierarchy of management groups and so on, right? If not, then I do have a playlist covering how to design Azure for scalability and growth. You can check it out over here. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Cheers.